Well, 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 what do we have here? Who is this guy right here? Who is this? <coughs> let's check it out. 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 Well, 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 what do you know? A ramp is in here, a tool bag and a cover. What do you know? It's DK and I'm back today with another video. Put me on your big screen video. If you are not subscribed, make sure you smash the subscribe button. Also, give me a thumbs up. Guess what? Y'all see what's behind me, baby. <laughs> yeah, we back. We back with smoke and we laugh to the bank like it's a joke. Now, today we're gonna cover a lot of things. You guys are gonna hear every single conversation we had with the dealership. We are also gonna tell you guys what was wrong with the van, as well as we also gonna address them comments, baby. I told you. It's game time. Let's get into it. For those of you that are new to the channel and you have no idea what's going on, I'm gonna give you guys the backstory. In 2022, December 31st, we bought this brand new van. It has six miles on it. It's a 2022 Mercedes Sprinter van, 2500, 170 wheelbase with the high roof. And if you don't know by now, I'm the truth. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we got the van, everything cool with the van. We were doing orders, everything was cool. Then after a while, we started hearing this like this rattling noise. Like, I don't know what it is. It was like under the van somewhere. I don't know exactly what it was, but they, they could not duplicate the problem at the dealership. Also, we had other little problems like the heat was smelling, I mean, the AC was smelling weird sometimes. Come to find out, we needed a cabin filter. I ain't know nothing about that. So, those are like some small things. It was just little things here and there. So, we always made sure that we let the dealership know everything that was going on with the van every time we took it to get an oil change. Mind you, we got an oil change earlier than we were supposed to. We wasn't, we wasn't getting it like every uh, 15,000 miles. We first started off with 13,000 miles and then we went from there. So, we always made sure we kept the oil changed, we kept the right gas, everything everything right with the van. And we also made sure that the dealership documented every single thing that we said that was wrong with the van. So, boom, one day, we driving, we uh, going on our regular route, we driving through the Walgreens parking lot, and the next thing you know, the camera on the infotainment system like gets stuck on the camera. Like, it's a 360 camera on the infotainment system, it got stuck on there, right? Like, what's going on with this van? This joint tweaking. You know, where electronics, you got to deal with stuff like this. So I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Pull over. Boom. We pull over, park the van, turn it off, turn it back on. It's still stuck on the camera. We turn it off, turn it back on. Now the camera is blank and it's glipping like, like it's like, like flickering, flickering, right? So we're like, I don't know. After some time, like 10 minutes, it stopped doing it. Everything was cool. We going on about our day, right? Later that day, we get an order. We supposed to go do this dispatch order that was gonna pay us $154. We ride on the highway, we ride, we ride, we talk, and we chopping it up. You know, we chilling, we chilling, we gotta go get this money. Chilling. Boom. Next thing you know, we get halfway there, the van gets like it got the, like a making a noise. So I'm thinking that we ran over something. So I'm not I'm not sure what's going on. My partner, she's the one driving, right? So she's driving, driving, she's like, something wrong with the van, I don't know what's wrong with it. I'm thinking like I don't know what's wrong with it either. Then we was going 80, it went down to 75. Like we couldn't go over 75. Then we couldn't go over 70. Then we couldn't go over 65. Then we couldn't go over 60. So we're in the slow lane, creeping through the creeping through the creep, 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 right? Boom. We finally pull off. Pull off, get to the gas station. When we get to the gas station, we turn the van off. Turn it back on. It's still making noises. Turn it off. Turn it back on. It's still it's like it was like shaking. It was like it was like sputtering. I don't know. Can't, really can't explain. Like sputter, like jerking, kind of. It was like pulsating, kind of, in in, in in a certain way. Pause. So, finally, after ten minutes of waiting, we turn it on, and guess what? The van running smooth. It run like nothing ever happened. So we cruise back. I'm like, look, we got to go back to the crib. Oh yeah, I forgot to tell you guys. When we started the van, guess what? The check engine light popped on. So I'm like, dang, check engine light on. I don't know what it is. And normally, let me tell you guys this. I'm not, a, I'm not a mechanic, but I know car, I know about cars. Boom. Usually when the check engine light come on, it's usually like a spark plug or like a sensor, O2 uh, bank one sensor. It's like sensors and stuff like that. It's not really that your engine is messed up for real. So it's just a sensor thing, usually. So boom. We ride back to the crib, right? Boom. Because now we ain't going to get this order no more. Because I'm like, we don't want to get straight out here with this order and just uh, jerking. And we got to drop all the way back. So boom. We ride. As we ride, I'm researching this stuff. I'm on Google like, okay. What can make check engine light on? Trying to figure out all this stuff. And they said that it was the spark plugs. Now, mind you, 
previously we went to the dealership, they recommended that we did get the spark plugs changed. Now, I do want to say this. We were still within, we still was good on the spark plugs. We're not supposed to get spark plugs, I think 90,000 miles. And right now we have 69,000 miles on the van. So we, we they just was prepping us saying, hey, look, pause. Y'all need to get some spark plugs soon. So we're like, okay, cool. So once the check engine light came on, I'm thinking they gotta be the spark plugs. They said we're gonna have to need some spark plugs soon. So I'm like, I already don't know. So I get to researching it, boom, 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 looking it up and come to find out one of the reasons were it was uh, misfiring because that's what it do when we need spark plugs. So boom, on the way home, I was looking up YouTube videos. Guess what? I'm looking at this like, look, I already got the tools in the back. I can fix this joint myself. I'm gonna go to Napa. I looked up the other uh, place they have, the AutoZone, Napa, or whatever. Looked up Napa, like boom. They got the parts at Napa. We can grab the parts. I can put the joint in tomorrow, on the next day, right? So I'm riding, and I'm thinking like, matter of fact, let's call the dealership and let's call the mechanic that we always take all the vehicles to. So we call them, call the dealership, we call the mechanic. Now, the reason why I didn't take it to the dealership to get the uh, spark plugs done was because they always want you to wait 3,000 years. They might not have a loaner. It might be all this stuff going on. And we, just jo we need this joint done quick. So we know this, at this mechanic shop that we always go to, they're gonna get us getting it out like a bank robber. So, boom, we take it there, right? We get the spark plugs done, $378, I think, or something like that. Oh, also, we did get some new tires, so we, we in there like $1,400. Got the new tires with the spark plugs. Boom, everything cool. My business partner picked that joint up. I'm at the uh, crib editing the video, doing that. She picked the joint up, she ride it, she drive that joint. She, that joint running smooth. I'm like, okay, cool, right? Next day, we shooting to our normal spot where we always get our orders from, right? We ride around, we get it, we ride around, we ride around, we cool. We park in our normal spot, everything chilling. We chilling for the uh, roadie orders to pop up. Boom, they pop up. I get one, she get one. I'm like, cool, bet. We're gonna do this and then we're gonna do this. We're gonna swing that, get that, drop that off, get that one, and uh, we're gonna uh, go that, right? So we get to drive into the first Home Depot, right? And that joint, the van got the tweaking. I'm talking about that joint got uh, uh, jerking, jerking, jerking. And then to the point we pull it in the parking lot, that joint turned off. It turned right off. I like just turned off. I'm like, dang. They turn, try to turn it back on. Turn, try to turn it back on. That joint turned off again. Try to turn it back on. That joint turned off again. I'm like, Phew. at least my thing is this. At least if I can get to the dealership or somewhere closer to home, then we'll be good. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna thug it out. We're gonna thug it out. We're gonna try to get up. We're gonna take the back streets. We ain't gonna get on no highway because if we get on the highway, we stuck. We stuck like Chuck. Boom. That joint would not turn back on. It kept on turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off. All them times, right? To the point where we're like, look, we just gonna reach out to AAA. So boom, I call OG like, hey, Ma, we straight over here. I need you to come get us. So she slides, come get us. And then the pull up, the pickup, I mean, the tow truck and her pull up at the same time. She get us the tow truck, take it to the dealership, right? So. It gets to the dealership. We give them the whole rundown, just like I'm giving y'all the whole rundown and everything, right? So mind you, when we dropped off the van, it was a Friday. He like, okay, cool. We're gonna look at the van and hopefully we can get figure it out today. If we can't figure it out today, on Monday we'll get you a loaner. We're like, okay, cool. Guess what? We ain't hear nothing from him on Friday. So, okay, Monday. We reached out to him, like, yeah, what's going on? He's like, yeah, y'all can pick up the loaner. Okay, cool. Bam. We're gonna pick up the loaner. Uh, we ride around, we ride around, we do it. We, we back to getting busy now. We back to getting busy. We ain't got the 170 wheelbase. We got the 144. Well, we going out here to, uh, let's go. We still run up dough, though. We went out there, did our thing, right? Some time go on, some time go on. Mind you, days and days and days and days. And guess what? We never hear nothing from the dealership. And they called us one day and said this I'm good. How are you? Well, I do have an update for you. So here's where we're at per Mercedes. The first step we need to do, I need to tear the motor down. You need to tear the, the what? I'm sorry? The motor down, the engine. And when I say that, I mean I mean I have to open it up and go internal. So there's a possible piston issue, which is internal. Here's the situation. What I would need you to do is initially agree to um, agree for me to remove the engine, remove the cylinder head, the oil pan, pistons, and then I have to send a report into Mercedes, okay? Here's the thing, I would need you to approve the labor time initially. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Boy, ain't no way, boy. Because I can't give an answer if it's gonna be warranty or not. Okay, so what would cause any of this problem that would not be covered under warranty? Um, improper parts, improper repair, but I have to see inside to 
make sure what oil is used to go through the parts. It's a whole thing that I have to submit to Mercedes. So if all of that was only ever done at your location, then how would anything not be covered under warranty? Well, no, here's the situation. I don't know if we, if the, if the, this started randomly, correct? Yeah, it just started, uh-huh. But, uh, but, but I have, but they have recorded multiple things that I've said that had issues the entire time since we got the van. And every time I just got, it, it would take three or four days. And then I would get a response that said that, um, the technician only could get it to reduplicate it one time, but we put it in the notes and we'll just keep an eye on it. There's been multiple so situations, been, multiples. You've yes. Been you've been reporting that you've had similar problems for some time, correct? Yes, including other noises underneath the van, including the last time that we got the oil change done, the last time we had service done on it, they left the, win they left the driver's side windows down either when they left the van outside in the rain or when they, um, or when they ran it through the car wash and there was the inside of the door jam was a big puddle of water. The driver's seat was all wet inside of the seat. So when I sat on it to drive the van home, the armrest, it soaked through my sweater. My pants were all wet. And then there was um, a whole puddle of water in the door jam. And I called immediately after, after I got back and complained about it. And it was the other girl, the one that's not there anymore but she wasn't oh, yeah. there so they gave me someone that was her replacement they said this um eddie said this guy's taking over for her he's going to be the new manager and this is who i'm going to give you to talk to so that's who i complained to and all he told me was that he'll check in with the service techs and he'll make sure that it doesn't happen again but everything was soaking wet let me let me do a little more research into this let me print everything out you're going to hear from me in roughly an hour okay okay Thanks. Thanks. Bye -bye. Bye. Now, you guys just heard the conversation. The first time, y'all didn't get the full conversation. I only gave y'all a little glimpse. And guess what? Why would I give y'all a little glimpse? Everybody was... No, I ain't gonna say everybody. There were some people in the comment section talking that gang, talking crazy, talking that robot. So make sure you stay tuned to the full video because I'm going to address all y'all. And I'm putting the uh, the the, uh, the comment right on the screen. We ain't about to play no games, but do our thing. This is the second conversation we caught the second time. Hi, this is Dan Overspray. Yeah. Quick question for you. What type of fuel do you use? Do you use the premium? We we use mostly the 87. We only use 87. You know, mostly this time. Oh, all 87? He said oh, he only pumps 87. Okay, so I gotta do some more. Give me about an hour. We're going through everything because I see at 28,000 miles you mentioned something. Um. See, I'm looking at the 20,000 a little bit prior to that, I believe. Let me see. And then at 11,000 here at 23, you mentioned the same thing English. So, okay, let me do a little more research on this and you'll hear from me an hour or so, okay? Okay, all right. Thanks. All right, bye -bye. Now, that was the second conversation. Now, do that whole little joint. Hey, I think that he tried to prep her a little bit. Pause. He tried to get her to say that she was putting premium in there. Absolutely not. We, I never put premium in there. I'm the one to pump the gas. I never put premium in there. I always put 87 because that's what's going in his van. Now, the reason why she said majority of the time that we use up 87 was because sometimes when we in other states, like we went to Indiana, I think they have 88 or I think Wisconsin have 88. Somebody, one of them, one of them states, they have 88. So when they don't have 87, we had to pump 88 before. But I do want to say this. I think he tried to prep her. I wasn't going. I only pumped 87 in the car, I mean in the van. So I'm not going. Now, he did call us back again, and here's that conversation. I just want to let you guys know, these are the full conversations. I don't want to leave anything out for you, so you be the judge. Hello? Okay, so your vehicle only requires, your, your metal only requires 87, so that's good. So I'm going to go ahead and proceed with this process. So what I will do is I will get going on it, but it's going to be here for a little bit. I'll say right now, minimum four to five days before I know something. Okay, so this you're going to... part gonna... of a process. Stay in the van, and then I'll keep you updated as I go, okay? Okay, so what's going to happen is, though, so what you're saying is you guys are going to break down everything, and then you're going to find out... We have to see what, we have to see what fails internally to go to Mercedes. So I'll take care of all the... I'll take care of that, and then I'll keep you updated, okay? Okay, but are, 
we're, can we come and get the rest of the stuff from our van then? Because we we need going to need the rest of those supplies if it's going to be that long. Yeah, no problem. You have a motor, correct? Yeah. All right, we'll take care of it. All right, thank you. All right. Thank you. So, as you guys just heard, he did keep his word. He reached out to us an hour later. It was, I ain't, I ain't gonna lie. It probably was like 35 minutes, 30 minutes later. He reached out to us and let us know, look, 87 is the gas you're supposed to put in there. Everything's cool. We're gonna break the engine down. We're gonna have a van for like four or five days. We went to the Benz of the ship. We got some of the stuff, the items that we need so we can go out there and get busy. And I'm glad you guys are with me. So, now we're just waiting. Now, all the time while we was waiting, we were still getting our cake up, our cake up, because we were already trying to get our weight up. I can help you. Um, hi Dan, this is Stephanie calling. I was che calling to check about the van. We haven't heard anything. Which one? I'm sorry, what's the last name? Oh, give me just a second. Ah, it's in the process of teardown still. Um, I'm probably going to have more answers by tomorrow because I'm waiting on one special tool from Mercedes. So okay. there is a specialty tool that we do need. I'm hoping to see that tomorrow, so I definitely will have more notes tomorrow. And I have a follow-up schedule with you tomorrow on the 31st. Okay. So I'll call you probably, I'd say, early afternoon. Okay, thank you. No, thank you. Bye-bye. So he said that they was waiting on this special tool, but guess what? We never heard from him the next day, and a whole week went by, and he finally called us and said this. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? So here's where we're at. We did tear everything down, and it appears to be a defective piston. So I'm going to update you tomorrow. We're putting everything through. Uh, it doesn't look kind of see you be responsible for anything, but... Um, we're gonna go ahead and put everything through Mercedes and I'll keep you updated tomorrow. Okay, so how, once all that is done and you guys get to get it to, how long are we looking at here? Oh, I said uh, availability. I don't have the parts availability yet. Um, usually that's stuff I can probably get relatively quick, so I'm hoping within four or five business days. For it to be completely done? Yes, yeah. Okay. All right, all right so I'll keep, it, I'll, keep, I'll keep you informed. Okay, so I'll hear from you tomorrow? Yeah, and then uh, later today. All right, thank you. Thanks. Bye. And finally, a week from that call, we finally got smoke back. And I want to say this: the joint ride smooth. It's ride smooth. It's ride smooth right now. Now let me tell you guys what needed. What was wrong with smoke? We needed to get a brand new piston. One of the pistons was messed up, which caused the turbo to mess up as well as a catalytic converter. So all three of those things are brand new right now. I don't know what happened. They didn't tell us what happened, but they have a whole eight page report. Let me get the report right here. They have an eight page report on all the stuff they had to fix on smoke, right? A whole eight page report. You know, cover my business up, man. Cause y'all, you know, y'all, y'all. Hey, don't, hey, don't forget. Hey, be still gonna talk about some comments too. Look how much it costs. Zero dollars. Now, Everybody that was talking crazy in that comment section, I told you to keep that same energy the whole time. This is what I need you to do, keep that same energy. So we're gonna go over some of the comments and before that, I wanna say this. I wanna say huge shout out to everybody who wished me luck with the van. Who, huge shout out to everybody that was saying that they gonna pray for me, they hope the van get fixed, everything gonna be all right. Huge shout out to everybody like that. But there's also some negative people who had something to say in the comment section who was talking that gang. So we're going to address this right now. Because guess what? All I do is try to help people. I'm trying to help y'all so y'all can go out there uh, and ball and not stall. But it's always going to be some people who hate. And I, I need you guys to understand that. This is not just about gig work and YouTube. And this is about life. There's always going to be people who are trying to go. They're going to try to kick you while they think you down. If you're doing it, stop it. Get some help. They thought I was down, they tried to kick me. And I do want to say this before I even get to the comment section. I will get this one person the credit that was, they was talking crazy, talking crazy about uh, everything, but they had the nerve to actually write it. They wrote the comment, I pinned the comment, and then 30 of y'all, if you're watching the video, 30 other people liked this comment, but y'all ain't had the balls to say it. So, I do want to say shout out to you for that, but we got to address the elephant in the room because you was talking that gang. You was talking that gang. You was talking that rah-rah. Look, you said I didn't listen. Let me, I'm gonna give you a comment. One thing about me is I always keep receipts. I always keep receipts. So anytime anybody wanna talk crazy, I, uh, I'm gonna pull it right on out, pause. So let's get into the comment section. Again, I don't like to be negative, but huge shout out to everybody that had some positive to say about us in the van and they was praying for us and they was hoping that we get back on top because we ain't gonna never stop. Now, let's go ahead and talk about this comment. You didn't listen. 
You need to have it scanned. You can't be trusting people like that. It makes you appear to be weak. That's why I learned to work on motors. I changed the heads on engines, get it scanned, go on the dealer and request a scan and full report. So let's start about this. You didn't listen. Everything ran smooth. So once I get home, I, I put the diagnostic joint in there. Boom, put that in there, check it. And it was some spark plugs. So you said, I don't listen. What you meant to say was you don't listen. I specifically said in the video that I plugged my diagnostic tool in the van and I thought it was a spark plug. Now, let me say this. How did I find out there was a spark plug? Because I Googled the code. The code came up in the, uh, in the scan tool. I Googled the code and one of the items were spark plugs. And I knew from previous the time we went there that they said that we might need some spark plugs soon so that's why i went to spark plugs and also i do know that if you have some bad spark plugs it will make the check engine light come on so that's why i went with that now as far as the you can't be trust people like that it makes you appear to be weak i'm gonna give you all some game hey pay attention to what i'm saying and apply this to your life because a lot of obviously 30 at least 30 of y'all don't understand there are multiple quotes and multiple sayings about different things number one you catch more flies with honey than you do vinegar. Number two, sometimes you have to play a fool to catch a fool. Fool, in my Mark, in Mark Dimensional voice, my double M voice. The extra fool on that's from double M. And then number three, everything that glitters ain't gold. Now, I really want you to listen to that second one. Sometimes you have to play a fool to catch a fool. Fool. And what I did was fool y'all. Y'all thought I was, y'all thought the van was messed up. Y'all thought y'all was the, y'all, look, you tried to kick me while I was down. And I want to say this. Y'all them people who was liking that, com liking that, that comment. That's the reason why I pinned it. I pinned it right on top so everybody can go in there. Yeah, let me like. So this, now I can gauge and see who with me and who not with me. I'm giving y'all some games. Some free game right now. I should make y'all pay for it. Pause. I gave y'all some free game. I want to see how many people agree with this. How many, uh, how many other people feel like this? So I can gauge who with me and who is not with me. And obviously, some of y'all are not with me. And that's cool. Because guess what? It is what it is. I ain't complaining. I'm maintaining getting this change. Now, we're going to get into the other comments that comment on the video, or a comment on that video under that person's comment. We got John Williams. John Williams coming a lot. Hey, he don't listen. I already tried to help. I'm done. John, let me say this. How many times have I asked for your help? Just let me know. Let me know how many times I tried to, I asked for your help. Next one. They can see them coming a mile away. No, they can see you coming from a mile away, not me. Them, you must be part of them. Because I'm not. I ain't never been the fool. I always stayed in school. Next one. He's going to learn. Hey, SC. Man, you be coming C's up and all that. He's going to learn the hallway, unfortunately. Dealership will take him up top. No, dealerships will take you up top. A lot of times, these comments that people, these negative comments that people say, not all of them are, are, are negative though. Some people just saying how they feel, and that's cool too. But speak for yourself, don't talk for me, don't speak for me. I speak for me, you speak for you. Now, let's get into some more. Too busy making YouTube videos to earn dollars, listen to your comments. If I was listening to my comments, I'd be a fool just like you. You just fell for the okie doke. He just sent you right off. See y'all, look, 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 look. This is this is deeper than just a, a, a YouTube video. This is deeper than just a comment. This is a part of life. Don't let nobody send you off. This type of people, some people is right. It'll be this person in school that's a bully, and don't nobody like this person. They can't stand them, right? Everybody, everybody's scared to fight him though, because they already know he they, he didn't beat up a couple people already, or he or she they beat up a couple people already, so they scared. Everybody terrified. And it takes this one new dude or new girl to come into school and they from another place and y'all from another place and they ain't going. For them to steal on the bully, knock them down, and then that's when the rest of y'all, 30 people who, who like the video, like that uh, comment, they get this, hurry up, get their little legs in. Yeah, I can't wait till my... Now you want to hurry up and get your legs in. Now let's get back to what I'm saying. Now, the next one said, you will be a fool. The next one said, you will be a fool to trust what the dealership says to you. They are clearly trying to get out of the warranty coverage. I, look, I already peeped the play. Shout out to you, I already peeped the play. I would have been a fool to win for that. Now, let me get to another comment. Another comment is this. Somebody said, the same person who said this first comment that I told you that everybody likes and all that. They said that they think that the, the van and my girl name, my partner name and all this stuff. I want to tell you this right now, and then I'm in this video. I told you I keep receipts, right? 
How about this? We gonna bet five thousand each. I my five thousand. It gets your five thousand, right? This is what we gonna do. Because you call him, you call him my bluff. And I and I look, I don't bluff. You call him my bluff, right? My guy Double M. I'm reach out to him, ask him, can we go on the smoke show? He got a thing called the smoke show where anybody who wants to smoke, they can come on. Now. What you gonna do is you gonna email me at romeshouseviews at gmail.com. You gonna tell me you want to smoke. We gonna send the 5,000 to Mark. He gonna send, you gonna send your five, I'm gonna send my five. And then you gonna come up there and mind you, the one thing about Double M is, you gotta show your face, pause. When you when you come up there, you can't be hiding behind no computer screens and, and got it dark in the back. No, 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 no. We wanna see how you looking when I take your money. We wanna see how you looking when we bet this 5,000. So we're gonna send the 5,000 to escrow, and then you're gonna ask me and call whatever bluff you wanna call, and then I'm gonna pull you wrong. And then what I'm gonna do after that, right? I'm gonna take your 5,000, and then I'm gonna put it in one of these uh, these crypto coins. Maybe one or two or three, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know which one it's gonna be. I'm gonna put it in one of them coins or some of them coins. And then what that's gonna do is that's gonna accumulate over time, and then by this time next year, I already might owe my guy double him a Rolex already. So I'm gonna take your 5,000, I'm gonna let that build up, and then I'm gonna buy his Rolex with your money. And then the rest of the money, if it's some more left, I'm gonna give it to the subscribers. Since you wanna play. That's all I gotta say. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like it tomorrow. It's going back down, because we ain't playing around. Because all 2024, all we're doing the puff to, uh, let's go. But guess what? We gotta go. I'll see you guys on the next one. We're going, we're going, we're flowing. You already know it. It's EDK, and I'm on my way.